I have been an online teacher in some way, shape, or form for almost four years. The bulk of them were online ESL. So here are eight things I wish I knew before becoming an online ESL teacher. Hey there, I'm Allison from OnlineTeacherAllison.com, and I teach stay-at-home parents how to teach online so they can earn an income from home. I remember when I decided to become an online ESL teacher. Uh, My son was almost a year old. We were moving from California to Oklahoma, and I just was not loving being in the classroom anymore. So I was looking for a way to stay home with my son, one, because I hated leaving him, and two, because I wasn't truly happy. So that's when I decided to teach online, and it has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. And there's a lot I learned on that journey, especially when it comes to online ESL, because that's where the bulk of my time has been. So here's eight things I wish I knew before becoming an online ESL teacher, (laughs) because it would have made life so much more, less stressful, so much less stressful. All right. The first thing I wish I knew before becoming an online ESL teacher was that it's not going to happen overnight. So when I was first getting started, I read all of these success stories about teachers who just took off running and they went from zero to 100, from no bookings to fully booked. It seemed like in two weeks. And I've talked about a little bit of it here and that just was not the case for me. It took me about six months before I really went from zero to 100. Now, did I have zero bookings that entire time? No, I didn't. I had some months better than others. And I show you my income on this video so you can kind of get an estimate of kind of how much I worked. But I didn't have this great group of kids that kept coming back over and over and over again until I was about six months in. And I'm really glad that I didn't throw in the towel three months in when I wanted to. I'm really glad I found other strategies and ways to find those students so that I did become successful. And it wasn't overnight, except for in the literal sense when I pulled all-nighters to do it. But it took the time and it took the patience, and I'm really glad I did it. And I wish I could tell myself then that it will get better and my students will find me. And they did. I wish I knew that then. The second thing I wish I knew before becoming an online ESL teacher is that the hours can suck, for lack of a better word. Um, So it really depends on the platform that you are teaching on. And I talk about hours in my best online ESL videos here. It's also down below. And so for me, I was teaching mostly on VIP Kid, and their students are in China. So it's about... 12 to 13 hours, I think, ahead of us, or it's 11 to 12, one of the two. I can't remember anymore. So their nighttime when they were taking lessons was very, very early in the morning for me on the central coast, not the central coast, in the central time zone. So I live in Oklahoma. We're in the central time zone. So for me, it was about five to eight, six to nine, depending on the time change, which was considered the best peak hours. That's when the most bookings come in. So that's when I had to work. I had to get up every single day at five in the morning, six in the morning and be ready to teach classes. And if I had been better about going to bed on time, it wouldn't have been so horrible. But I was going to bed at like midnight and and having to get up the next morning and then having to spend time with my son all day. And I wish I could tell myself that it's temporary and I wouldn't be doing that forever. And so just be responsible and stop killing yourself over trying to stay awake. I wish I told myself that too. And I also wish I put a little more work into it and found hours that worked a little better. But honestly, at the time with my son being as little as he was, he was like one and two years old. It It's what worked because he was asleep And with my husband being at work all day, I I couldn't teach during the day short of finding a sitter. And it was 2020. I wasn't about to do that. So that's really what worked for me. But I want you to know that the hours can be really awful, but they don't have to be if you have the flexibility in your schedule to work during the day and you put the time into finding a platform that works best for you. All right. The third thing I wish I knew before becoming an online ESL teacher was that I would build connections with students in foreign countries that I have never and will never meet face to face. 
I thought it was just bonkers. How do you build connections with these kids that, one, don't speak very much English, and two, they are in China. I am in America. So how does that work? I I couldn't understand it. I learned how to build a classroom community. I've learned how to build relationships with students in my classroom. But I wasn't taught how to do that online. Like, So I was so surprised when these kids started coming back and I had more than one class with them where I learned their favorite things. And even if they couldn't tell me, they would show me their toy. It'd be on a shirt. It'd be in their room somewhere. I was just so surprised when I could see those things and I could name it for them and we could talk about it in future classes. And then with the older kids, they were able to tell me that they were in dance or they did karate or taekwondo and they got to show me some of the things they're proud of. And I just loved it. I remember this one student he went by Leo and he was, he, he loved dinosaurs. So VIP kids mascot is a dinosaur. This is Dino. But on top of that, my son had dinosaurs. So he had plastic dinosaurs I would bring to class. He has this dinosaur book where you like push the button and it makes sounds. And I would bring that to class and we'd roar like dinosaurs at seven in the morning. And it was just so fun to build these connections. And I still think about these students. I can still name a bunch of them. And, you know, I wish we could have met face to face or we could have had more time together. But that's the nature of teaching your students move on, even in the classroom. They're with you for a year and they move on. So that's one of the happy, most bittersweet things about teaching online is you do build connections with these students who will eventually move on. The fourth thing I wish I knew when becoming an online teacher, an online ESL teacher, is that it's okay to get a bad review. So I kept hearing this over and over and over again, but in my brain, I was like, how can that be okay? It's going to ruin my my rating, like your average of like good reviews to bad reviews. And parents are just going to see that I'm this awful teacher and they're not going to book with me. And so I got my first bad review and it ruined my entire day. And now two years later, three years later, however long it's been, I don't even remember what it said. It's really, truly okay because I did keep getting bookings. Now, it might hurt your bookings for a little bit, but it won't hurt your bookings forever. And especially in the beginning, you want to try really hard not to get a bad one before you have the good ones to help bump it up. But I promise you it's not going to hurt what you've built. I want you to think about shopping online. You read the reviews on things. There's bad reviews on literally everything. I don't think I've shopped for anything where I haven't seen bad reviews. Has it stopped me from buying? Sometimes yes, but most often, no, it doesn't. I just cross my fingers and hope whatever the bad reviews are, it doesn't happen to me. And I have been burned where I have gotten a product and whatever the bad review was about, it, it it was the same for me. And in that case, I just return it or I just count as a loss, right? And that's what parents are going to do. They might take a class with you. And if they see that, then they're just going to say, okay, a lot of them will just move on with their lives and they'll find another teacher. But others, they'll take their your class and they'll realize that you are not the way they say that you are. You're not your bad review. And they're going to keep coming back and they're going to tell their friends about you and they're going to leave you a good review, hopefully. So don't don't let it crush your spirit. I know it's hard. It's crushed mine. It still does. But it won't ruin everything you've worked so hard to build, especially if you don't let it. The fifth thing I wish I knew before becoming an online ESL teacher was that I would love teaching again. I left the classroom pretty, uh, I can't think of the word, but I was, I was pretty beat up. Um, bad administration difficult parents, students that weren't always the most respectful, so much work, politics, and it was just, I didn't love it anymore. I love the act of teaching. I still do, but I didn't love everything else that came with it. And it, it just, I knew it wasn't what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Really, at the time, what I was doing was I was putting in the time until I could further my education to get a master's and then a doctorate because I wanted to go to the college level. Because what I wanted to do was teach in 
the teaching programs, so teaching college kids how to be a teacher because they wanted to be there. And while I still think that would be really cool, <laughs> one, oh my gosh, the student loans, <laughs> two, the time to get there, and three, I'm loving what I'm doing and I don't see it going away. Okay, the sixth thing I wish I knew before becoming an online ESL teacher was that I needed to diversify my income. I talked about this here on how to diversify, but let me tell you why first. I'm going to link it down below too. Um, so I taught on VIP Kid. I also was a teacher on, it was called GoGo -Go Kid. It was also teaching students in China. Same thing. I didn't love the curriculum very much, so I, I didn't stick with it because I preferred VIP kids curriculum. It was more rigorous. It it was fuller. So it was so much easier to fill up the time in VIP kid than it was in GoGo -Go kid. GoGo -Go kid, I felt like we repeated the same thing about 50 times, <laughs> the same word, the same sentence frame. And I just felt like there could be more. In VIP kid, they do science, they do history, they, they just, there's math in there. So there's just it's not in every lesson, no, but there was just so many more ways to fill the time. And so I liked VIP Kid. So what I didn't do was continue diversifying. So at the end of 2020, when China changed their laws, basically saying that we couldn't be, we couldn't teach their students anymore, I was immediately out of a job. So some platforms shut down overnight. I was very thankful that VIP Kid was able to go as long as they were able to go because it gave me more time to come up with a backup plan. Now, if I had div diversified ahead of time outside of China, it would not have been an issue. So a lot of the popular platforms back then were all based in China. GoGo -Go Kid, VIP Kid, Magic Ears. Um, there's another one I can't think of the name right now. Palfish. They were all mostly Chinese students, and I didn't put the work in to find other platforms that don't cater to Chinese students because there's so many others out there. Just because it's not a popular one doesn't mean it's awful, and I need to tell myself that all the time. So here's how you diversify so that when you are applying to other platforms, you do it in the most efficient way for you and your schedule. This video is going to teach you how to diversify on your schedule how to diversify your platform wise and how to schedule yourself just personally and familial family wise, because those two things kind of go hand in hand. All right. The seventh thing I wish I knew before becoming an online ESL teacher is that I would have a purpose outside of being a mom again. So when I left the classroom, I felt like my purpose was becoming a mom and my son was a baby and that took up all of my time. But as he got older and it took up less of my time, I needed something more for just me. And that was online ESL teaching. Now it gave me something else to focus on. It gave me another goal. Now I have my goals with my son, right? I want to raise him to be a good human, but I needed more. Mental health wise, it was not great for me before I became an online ESL teacher. There's a lot that went into that, but one of them I found out after the fact was that I needed something for me. And I thought, I'm a mom, that's for me, I love being a mom, but I needed something else, and that was it. And having that purpose again really helped. It was exactly what I was missing. I was missing being a teacher, but without all the extra annoyances. And my last thing, number eight, the eighth thing I wish I knew before becoming an online ESL teacher is that it's okay to take time off. So I taught every single morning for, gosh, it was probably a year or more before I felt comfortable taking time off because I had, they were called regulars. I had regulars every day of the week. And if they didn't fill it, some other kids filled the rest of my morning. And I just was so afraid of them leaving. And so when I had to eventually take time off because we moved and our house was ready, the internet was not installed yet. They had not laid the cable for internet. I had to take time off. I had no choice. And so what I ended up doing was in my in my feedback, I told parents after class that, hey, I I'm moving. I'm going to wait for internet to come up, but I will be back. So while I'm not going to be available for three to four weeks, for you, it's probably going to be one week for vacation or whatever it happens to be, uh, maternity leave. It'll be longer. Uh, I will come back. So make sure you follow me on VIP Kid. They had a feature where you could follow and then they would be alerted when I opened up slots and students came back. 
And so that really made me feel like I could take the time off and did 100% of my students come back. No, they did not. And while it's a bummer, there's some that I really missed. It's just what happens. It's the program they're enrolled in or maybe they just wanted a change of teacher and that's okay too. Or they didn't read the feedback to know. And there's a lot of factors that go into it and new students will take their place. That's just the way it is. And if you're patient, you will be completely filled up again if it does affect your bookings and everything's fine and dandy. So either your students will come back and everything's great or they don't and you will find new ones and they will be great. And if they don't come back, maybe you didn't want them anyways, right? Do you want to work for families that aren't okay with you taking a vacation? So... I wish I knew it was okay. So this year, um, I'm not an online ESL teacher primarily. I do still do it. But I took off a week because my husband was getting LASIK surgery and we had to go down to San Antonio for it. Long story there. Um, And so I took off a week and I enjoyed that time with my family. We made a little vacation out of it as best as we could. My husband had surgery the day of. He slept the rest of the day and basically it was one day shot and the rest we explored San Antonio. We went to the river walk. We did the mall. We went to SeaWorld. Like we did all the things as a family and it was, it was great. It's okay to take time off. Okay. So I hope this kind of gives you a little insight as to what life is as an online ESL teacher and as a new online ESL teacher so you don't have the same reservations as I do. And I know they won't be completely gone, but I want you to hear, I want you to hear this in the back of your mind. Allison said it's going to be okay. Just keep going because it's going to be okay. Just keep going. In the very worst case scenario, go find a different platform and start completely fresh. All right. I hope you're having the greatest week ever and we will chat soon. Bye.